Hi everyone, welcome to this week's installment of Lunchbox. I'm Jacob, in case you forgot, and I will be playing the Saraband from the first suite of Bach. This week I'll be playing the Minuets from the Bach first suite. This week I'll be playing the Gig from the first suite. I was practicing this all week, thinking, why does this feel so weird? Um, and I think I came to the conclusion that it's strange to just play the last movement of a Bach cello suite. Usually it's one big journey that you take and you get to the last movement and it feels fresh and exciting and happy and joyful. It's the conclusion of the whole piece, but just to play the last movement by itself was kind of a weird challenge for me. So of course I was overthinking it the whole time and I had to remember that it just needs to be simple, fun joyful, elegant, and that's all. So with the Saraban in Bach's cello suites, it's always the fourth movement. Um, it's a very slow dance in three, a very slow three. Um, so if we think of other dances that that are in three, we, the one that comes to mind for me is, the, is a waltz. Um, and in a waltz, the emphasis is always on the first beat of each bar. So if you think of some famous waltzes that we know, like Waltz of the Flowers from the Nutcracker, you can barely, very clearly hear that the emphasis is always on the first beat of every bar. In a saraband, however, the emphasis is on the second beat. So while I'm playing, um, see if you can hear the emphasis um, and the direction going towards the second beat of every bar in this very slow, uh, reflective and melancholy dance that Bach has composed. I think minuets are so elegant and simple, but it's really hard to make them sound that way. And so um, it's, it's always challenging when you have so many repeats to make things sound new and interesting and refreshing. So that's been kind of my challenge this week when I've been working on the minuets.
practicing. I've been doing some cooking and some baking, and yesterday I made bread. It's in here, and you might be wondering why it's in here, and I will show you why. Well, it's, it's in here. I think my two favorite recipes since quarantining would have to be uh, pesto grilled cheese with sun-dried tomatoes, and also a red pepper pesto pasta with kale, walnuts, and feta. In case you can't tell, I really love pesto. <laughs> Today for lunch, we're having one of our family's favorite snacks. Oh, I'll show you why I need to keep it in Tupperware. This is the reason. This is Boo. She loves bread, just like me. The other thing I've been up to in the past couple days is baking. And I uh, actually have my zucchini muffins here that I made, um, which are really delicious, especially around four o'clock in the afternoon with a nice cup of tea. Maybe I should have clarified that a little bit. Bones in our family means green beans with almond pesto. This recipe I've made a bunch. We started making it around Thanksgiving time. It originally came out of a smitten kitchen recipe that I found and I thought, hey, that sounds kind of weird, but really good. It's just green beans and the sauce is almonds and Parmesan, a little bit of garlic, some white wine vinegar to make it tangy and the whole thing is crunchy and delicious and we can't stop eating it. And I know another person who would really like it. Hi, I'm Lisa Stelchenpol, and on this week's Lunchbox, I will be playing the first movement from Telemann's fourth Fantasia. It's appropriate that we are playing Telemann this week because Johann Sebastian Bach was given a position in Leipzig only after Telemann turned it down. So some trivia for you. Also, my twin sister and I played a lot of Telemann growing up. There was a particular trio sonata that I think we played for a couple of solo and ensemble competitions, maybe. So it's a bit of a throwback. Thank you for joining us and stay safe. I'll be playing the second and third movements, the Grave and Allegro. And in working on the Grave this week, I have found it challenging in a way very similar to the Sarabans of Bach. The movements are slow and often have a lot of chords. And for me, the difficulty arises in finding the pacing of the movement, how to break the chords, how to keep the direction of the music going while retaining a rather solemn um, tempo. It's been a lot of fun preparing this music for you this week, so I hope you enjoy some Telma.
Thank you. 